Uh, I'd like to welcome to the program uh, from Red Dragon uh, Cartel guitarist Jakey Lee. Uh, Jakey, you have a new record out. I, I just saw tour dates for next year kind of coming in. Uh, do you have any plans for Thanksgiving? <laughs> wow. Uh, we were just talking about that. Um, yeah, we're just letting it be known to all our friends that we don't cook. And, uh, <laughs> you know, we're available. <laughs> we're available. But, uh, yeah, we'll figure something out. Yeah, no, right. no plan. I want to just kind of kickstart a little bit with Ozzy, and hopefully I'm not hitting stuff that's just too redundant with you, because I know you get hit with it a lot. But uh, w when you got the the gig, it was, you know, that transition from Randy Rhodes and everything that happened there, it was down to, to you and George Lynch, was is my understanding. What was that the actual tryout like? I mean, was it literally a situation where you're walking in and he's walking out? or? Yeah, yeah, it was. Um, well, George had been out uh, with him for, I don't know, a week or two, I think. Um while Brad was still playing the guitar, and George came out and he would do uh, the sound checks and shit like that. And, uh, yeah, uh, my understanding was George was supposed to be the first guitarist in uh, Blizzard of Oz um, before Randy. Oh, really? Yeah, I heard uh, from several people um, that uh, George was offered the gig, but Dawkin had just gotten signed in uh, Germany. And George thought that that was a better uh, better choice to make at that time, especially because Ozzy was a mess, you know. Um, <laughs> in between Sabbath and, well, I was going to say in between Sabbath and the Blizzard of Oz, but pretty much during Blizzard of Oz also, he was just a mess, and nobody really thought he was going to make anything of himself. So George turned the gig down, and then it went to Randy. So when Ozzy was looking for a new guitar player, uh, immediately he went to George again. And like I said, he, uh, he went on tour, did sound checks, but apparently um, Ozzy just wasn't 100% on him. Okay. And uh, he had me audition at uh, SIR Studios. I came down, played... Uh, after I played, I, I, you know, I messed the songs up. It's not like I played shitty or anything, but I wasn't that familiar with the songs. I had to do a Crazy Train and I Don't Know. And if you're a guitarist, you know that you could, you could yeah. change, interchange the parts. You could put this part of the song into the other song and it all makes sense. And that's kind of what I was doing because <laughs> I just learned the songs. So... So I was sure that I, you know, okay, I, I don't even know the songs. Why, why would he hire me? And I was packing my gear up when uh, Ozzy, uh, Ozzy and Sharon walked up to me. And at the same time, George was walking in the door. And Ozzy looked at me and he said, do you want it? And I was like, do what? And he says, do you want the fucking gig? <laughs> <laughs> like, yes, I do. Yeah. He said, you've got it. And George had just walked up at that moment, and he turned to George and said, it's his, you've lost it. And then he walked away. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that was, uh, I was in the band for maybe 30 seconds before I saw Ozzy fire somebody. <laughs> and and it's, uh, it's never pretty. Okay. Uh, <laughs> what were what were you doing out at the time? Like, what were you, this, you were out of rat by this point, correct? Yeah. Were, were you was, without uh, a band at the at the moment or No, I had nothing. I was I it's it's ironic because I yeah, I I'd, I'd been out of rat and I had joined Rough Cut and then I I quit Rough Cut and I was even uh with Dio for about 6 weeks or so. And then I got fired from that and uh <laughs> at that point I I was uh pretty discouraged i i was um i couldn't find a band i wanted to play with uh i didn't know any musicians i wanted to play with uh and uh i was 25 and in the back of my mind i always thought that if you can't get something going by the time you're 25 then you're probably never going to get anything going and uh i got that I got the Aussie gig. Let me see. One, two, two months before I turned twenty-six. Okay. So you you, you, so, you covered it. Yeah, I just I got in there just just in the nick of time. 
But uh, no, I had absolutely nothing going, and I wasn't sure what I was going to do after that. And then, uh, and then that dropped in my lap. I, I gotta know why did you get fired from Dio? I think that he was looking for more of a, a European, okay, sort of sound, because um, he. he Back then, and maybe to this day, I don't know, uh, there's heavy metal, you had the American version, you had the European version. And the uh, American version uh, relied a lot on Van Halen. Mm-hmm. That was kind of the American metal sound. And um, I am I am more of that school, of the Eddie Van Halen, Southern California. You know, there was a bunch of us, and uh, I was more of that, maybe a little busier, on my rhythm stuff sure. than Dio would have liked, and uh, I, I think that was the main reason. Fair enough. Uh, you know, I, you touched on something that I definitely wanted to mention you. It's not a question. It's I remember I told you I, you're going to might get an ego boost a couple times here. Uh, I, I I think you're a phenomenal guitar player. You were you were the, one of the, the big influences on me. You know, during the '80s, you know, as a 15 year old in my bedroom, uh, you know, playing guitar. Uh, and but I, I really think your rhythms are really creative and inventive, and, and it's like they're very challenging to play for one. But they, they also sound really good. You know, they have a musical quality to them. They're not just like an exercise of of stretching. They're 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 very I don't know fundamental for writing a song. So if I'm saying that well at all, I don't think uh, too many people of that era really were of your level on that. Maybe Eddie Van Halen. Yeah, Eddie was. Ed, um, no, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. I appreciate the fact that you recognize that because I spend a lot of time on on my rhythm parts. You know, I'll, uh, you, know, you, get, you know, there's a basic chord progression and then I find out where on the fretboard, what inversion of the chord seems to fit the song the best and then I put stuff on top of that chord a lot of times to make it an interesting chord and then to get from one chord to the next I like to have maybe an underlying melody within the chord structures so I uh, yeah I'm getting too detailed not at all I spend a lot of time a lot more time on my rhythms than I do on my solos Um, and I always thought that was the, uh, uh, the best part of my playing and I do think that there wasn't a lot of uh, other guys doing that, uh, particularly in the 80s. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it was all about the guitar hero. And uh, you didn't become a guitar hero for your rhythm playing. <laughs> you know, it was all about the solos. And, um, no, I, I do take a certain amount of pride in that. Uh, my rhythm work, I think, is, uh, uh, well, at least thought out. Out. You come on to Bark of the Moon. It's well established that you didn't get any songwriting credit. I have a question on that from a business standpoint. How does that work? Was it just like, were you just kind of like, did you sign a contract that said you were kind of hired to do a job almost like, um, and it was part of that deal that you didn't get any um, songwriting credit? Going into the album, I asked, and uh, I was told that I would get, naturally, I would get songwriting credit for anything I wrote. And I would get my fair share of publishing, and uh, and it was a given. Everything was going to be cool. Um, Bob Daisley was back in the band uh, for Bark at the Moon, and I thought because he had a lot of problems with them after the first two records, yeah, I thought it was a good sign that he was back in for Bark at the Moon. That you know there wasn't going to be that that whole mess again um so i took i took them at their word uh that i would get a fair contract and during the recording i i occasionally bring it up and i say uh, is that contract ready and they said no no but it's almost there don't worry about it okay. everything's cool uh once i finished the final guitar track on the record then magically the contract appears and <laughs> it said i wrote nothing um I, I signing this contract means you can never say that you had anything to do with the okay. writing, blah, 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 blah. Um, and I was, you know, I, I said, I, I don't like that. I'm not signing this. This is not what you promised. And Sharon told me that, uh, well, you know, they'll fly me back home 
and they'll get another guitar player to replace my tracks now that they're all finished, and I can stand in line and sue them, um, which didn't seem like a good option. Um, you sure. know, I, I, I wasn't smart in that I didn't get the contract first, but not signing that contract then meant that I was going to be the asshole that is in Ozzy Osbourne for a minute and then sues him, you know, it, it, there's no way I would have looked good coming out of that. Um, especially back then, you know, mm -hmm. cause you didn't have the internet. You couldn't, uh, uh, you couldn't put information out there like your side of the story, unless a magazine was interested in printing it. And uh, they'd probably more, be more cared. interested in Ozzy than you at that, at that moment. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't have gotten my side in. And if I did, I would have looked like an asshole. So I, I had to sign the contract. I didn't like it. And I didn't really even adhere to it as far as... Uh, I think the first interview I did after that, <laughs> they, said, they said, so Ozzy wrote all the songs. I said, no, he didn't. <laughs> he said, I, so I broke the contract right off the bat. Um, but, uh, yeah, it was... Uh, I made sure for Ultimate Sin that yeah, I didn't... Okay. I didn't do a thing before I had a contract. In that, front that's of me, where but, I was going uh, next. And, and you wrote most of that music while he was in the Betty Ford, Ford Clinic. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. I had nothing else to do, um, so hey, I bought one of those high-tech, fancy four-track cassette recorders. <laughs> ooh, was it a Tascam? <laughs> it was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that was, uh, you know, that was the height of technology at the time. Uh, I remember and my first Tascam. <laughs> I just spent my time uh, writing songs while he was, uh, quote, getting yeah. <laughs> you know, clean, unquote. Um, uh, so, yeah. Yeah, hey, I, wrote, I wrote most of the music for both albums. You yeah, know. you're a you're a young man at this time. What's Ozzy like wasted, and and how did you like? Would you what is it, was it fun because you would like want a party too, or was it like, ah, dear God, is he knocking on my you know hit hotel room door at three in the morning again, or? <laughs> yeah, it was, um, <laughs> you know, it was fun to party when Molly Crew was opening. Okay. Because uh, they were my buds. I knew them from L.A. And so that was a lot of fun. It was never fun to party with Ozzy. Because um, <laughs> Ozzy, Ozzy, when he's sober, is a sweet, funny guy. He's like one of the funniest guys I've ever met. He's just, he's just fun to be around when he's sober and he is for a little a bit just a tiny bit of t of a window there where he starts drinking and he's still fun um and then he just and then he uh and then a switch goes off and he just he is not fun he's not fun he's me he turns mean and and just ugly and and uh if anything seeing that made me cut back on uh, the amount of partying I did, okay, and uh, yeah, yeah, it was it was never fun to party with Ozzy. <laughs> and there was times where he would knock on my door. It'd be like three or four in the morning, and uh, in the hotel, and nice. I'd be sleeping, and I'd wake up because he would not quit knocking until I opened the door. And he'd come in, he says, "I've got this idea for a song." I'm like, oh, "Okay, let me get my guitar." And then, <laughs> and then this literally, to me at least. This is what it sounded like. Okay, play this. I'm like, holy shit. Can you hum that again? And I'm like, so I I hit something on the guitar, anything like this, and he get all pissed off. No! Listen to me. I'd sit there trying, and oh god, I wish I. I after about the third time it happened, I turned my uh, tape recorder on so I could record all of it. <laughs> and, and, and I played it back for him the next day, and he just looked at me and said, Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> he said, I'm sorry. It, it, it'll never happen again. And, and thank God it didn't. But... Oh, I wish I knew where that tape was. Oh, I was going to say, <laughs> tell me you still got that. but uh, <laughs> no. it, Enough time has passed. We can all laugh at it, right? Yeah. Um, well, you know, uh, when you uh, one of the things, uh, getting back to your rhythm playing, um, and by the way, thank you for sharing that wonderful story. I'm glad I, I brought that up. Uh, 